Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Join me in a journey over a strange terrain. A terrain filled with terror and clouded by suspense. And ask, ask yourself, how long is a minute? What is eternity? And learn, perhaps, that one can be as long as the other. Our mystery drama, An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, was adapted from the story by Ambrose Bierce, especially for the Mystery Theater, by Sam Dan and stars William Prince. They're going to hang Peyton Forrester. Hang him by the neck until he is dead. Hang him high from the top of the Owl Creek Bridge, 50 feet above the rushing torrent, which is now raging in full flood. Peyton Forrester stands on a single, fragile plank. The rope is already around his neck. Thirty feet of slack neatly coiled beside his boots. But this is not a lynching, nor even an ordinary execution. This is a formal military ceremony. Peyton Forrester is a rebel, literally a southern civilian. And he has been captured by the Union Army in the fall of this year of 1863 as he tried to sabotage the Owl Creek Railroad Bridge. And now, he must pay the price. Actually, the only distress evident in the entire scene seems to be manifested by a young soldier who, with his corporal, is stationed some ten feet from Peyton Forrester, where they serve solemnly as his guards. Corporal? Just stand steady, boy. Yes, you stand steady. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be sick. Oh, no, you ain't, Woody boy. No, you ain't. Now, this thing will be over in less than a minute. See? Corporal. See? Sergeant Smith's getting the board ready. Uh, I, I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know. Just you take some deep breaths, son. You're going to be all right. Like I said, he's positioning the board that's supporting the plank... The Johnny Reb is standing on. I said I, I don't want to look. Now, nobody says you got to look, Woody boy. Only it's a pity to miss a good hanging. How many you expect to see in your lifetime? I don't want to see none. This one here. This is a prime hanging. Son, much of the time you get to see cutthroats and riffraff and lowlifes. But here, you got a gentleman. Corporal? Yeah, boy? The prisoner. Hmm? What about the prisoner? Well, what... What do you suppose... The prisoner is... Is thinking about... Right now? But indeed, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking... That the water I see below me has... Been turned to gold by the early sun. Gold. Golden. The same golden tints I see in Millicent's hair. I'm thinking of Millicent. Millicent. Golden Millicent. And I hear... I hear the very last words she spoke to me. It seems... Ages. Centuries ago. Is it true? Can it be true that... It was only last night... Hmm? Yes, Millicent, darling. Now, young Robert Thompson's is here. Robbie? I thought he was raiding Yankee supply lines. Oh, he was. He's, he's back. He's safe now. Bless him. Well, he needs a horse. He can have anything he wants. Bring him in here. Why? Why do you keep him waiting? Now, you and I must talk first, Peyton. 
You mean one of the true heroes of our country must be kept cooling his heels while you oh, and I... not exactly cooling his heels, Peyton. He's busy having his first decent meal and we... But I want to see him this minute. After all, he has much time to spend here. He must be in a rush to get home, see his folks. He's not headed home. He... He's not? No, he's off on a mission. What do you mean? Well, it has something to do with blowing up a bridge someplace. Well, then he needs help. Oh, Peyton, I, I was afraid... I've been sitting here doing nothing for almost three years. Now, that's not true. You've been raising food and, and you've been growing cotton. Meanwhile, and... better men have been getting killed. Now, what you're doing is more important. And safer and easier. Well, it's not your fault the doctors say you're unfit to serve. But I'm fit enough to help Robbie Tompkins blow up a bridge. Oh, Peyton, darling... No, 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 honey. You know, I, I can't shirk if there's a job to be done. You've got your job. No, honey. It's not enough. Don't go. <laughs> what are we arguing about? He hasn't even asked me. He'll ask you, Peyton. He'll ask you. Well, then, I've got no choice. Please. Please listen to me. You've always been a man of honor. Now, be a man of common sense. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Peyton? The war is over. What are you saying? We have been bled white at Gettysburg. The war has just begun. Peyton, for six months, maybe a year, there'll be more slaughter, but it'll be for nothing. The war is over. Don't say that. But it's the truth. Millicent, don't you believe anymore? I believe we need a miracle. Then we'll have a miracle. We'll work harder. We'll fight harder. We'll pray harder. You'll see. We'll have that miracle. You, Mr. Peyton Forrester! Robbie, Robbie, you young scoundrel! You come in here this minute! Oh, Peyton, Peyton, you are sight for so hard. Well, tell me. Tell me how you outsmarted the Yankees. You tell me everything. Later, later, right now, I need all the darkness I can get. Hey, well, what's this about a bridge? The railroad bridge at Owl Creek. Are the Yankees at Owl Creek already? That bridge must be destroyed, Peyton. One little barrel of gunpowder under the truss on this side of the river. Ah, I figured you'd know the exact spot. And I've got the gunpowder, too. Fuses, all we need. Peyton, Peyton, Jeff Stewart's cavalry's here. Hey, darling, by the time we explain it to General Stewart, we could turn the whole entire bridge into burnt matchsticks. Now, now, Robbie. Yes, sir. Now, you go around the back. Get yourself a horse. You leave in five minutes. Yes, sir. Hey, honey, you know I have no choice. But I hear the Yankee general has issued an order. Any civilian caught interfering with, well, with the railroad, the bridges, the tunnels, the trains will be hanged. I know, Millicent. We do the same. But I beg you not Darling, to... you know what I must do. But you have children. Am I the only father in the South? Hey, now I won't let you Millicent. go. Please. Help me. What can I do to... to, to... Pray for me. Pray for the miracle. Robbie, up yonder, the bridge. We must be right in the middle of the Yankee camp, Peyton. Keep low to the ground. They won't see us. So I said to Mama, I promise I ain't going to take up with any bad women. I hope, Woody, you kept your promise. Well, I ain't had a chance to test it one way or the other so far, Corporal. To tell the truth, Woody, actually there ain't no such thing as a bad woman. <laughs> that should be a Corporal. Maybe five, six men. Let's move to the right. Now. Hey, Corporal. Hmm? You hear something out there? Son, you start seeing Johnny Rebs behind every tree and we won't get a wink of sleep. Yeah, but I'm sure I now, heard... The fence is supposed to be pulling guard duty out there. Hold it, Robbie. There's a sentry between us and the bridge. Yeah, now I see him. Headed this way. We have to get rid of him. I'll do it. He doesn't know we're here. As he walks past, I'll jump him. Go set the kid in place. Light the fuse. We'll dive into the water. Swim for it. Say, it's time to relieve Spencer. Hey, Spence. Come on in. 
Where do you stand, guard? Hurry, Robbie. Yeah. Stand there! Corporal, I hear somebody out there. Huh? Everybody, grab your weapon. On the double. Right. Give me the fuse, Robbie. There they are! Oh! Uh, uh. Robbie, I hit Peyton. I'm here. Robbie, get me. Me. No, no, run for it, Peyton. Run for it. We can take them alive. What's he thinking about, Corporal? Waiting there for the rope to snap. What must he be thinking about? What would any man be thinking about, Woody? The wife? The kids? I wish we hadn't caught him last night. It was our duty. Uh, it would have been so much better if we'd have shot him like his pal. Do you hear that, Woody? What? I... I hear nothing. Nothing. That's exactly it. Nothing. Sergeant Smith has just finished positioning his board. He has got it in a state now where one more blow releases the plank Peyton Forrester is standing on. And then, down he goes. Till the rope snaps. I don't want to hear it. Look. The captain knows Sergeant Smith is ready. When he raises, then lowers his sword, Sergeant Smith is going to give that board one whack. And that's it. And Forrester knows it. He can see it. What must that man be thinking about? longer thinking, son. I'm praying. Praying for a miracle. I'm praying the rope is going to snap and break. And I'll get my hands free and I'll fall into the river and it'll carry me swiftly away from here to safety. That's what I'm doing, son. I'm praying. Praying for the miracle. Sister Millicent is praying. Just you're praying too, I can tell by your voice, son. You don't want me to die this way. With all of us praying, has to be a miracle. Has to be. Oh, dear Lord. The captain, he's... He's raising his saber. He... Woody, Woody, you don't have to look. He's bringing it down. Goodbye, Johnny Reb. Corporal, look! The rope! The rope! It snapped! It broke! It broke! It broke! It's it, a miracle! It's a miracle! Get my hands free! Roger, I'm... I have to get him free! Come up for air! I'm ah, getting ah, ah, ah. it! Oh, it's loose! I'm free! Free! Air! Air! And the air! Air! There he is! Moving downstream. That's there he is. Shoot. Fire. Fire all Yanks. Fire all day, Yanks. Fire at everything you've got. You won't hit me. You can't hit me. It's a miracle. You can't shoot a miracle. A miracle. Perhaps if you want something strongly enough and pray hard enough, the rope can break, the rifles can miss, and you will not drown in the raging torrents. Miracles do happen. Have we had one here? It is late in the year 1863. Peyton Forrester, a southern civilian, has attempted to sabotage the railroad bridge high across Owl Creek. He's been caught by the Union Army and hanged from the bridge. No, not quite. As his living body hurtled downward, the rope that was supposed to snap and break his neck instead broke. Peyton has fallen unharmed into the stream. A squad of soldiers is in rapid but futile pursuit. The 
miracle! Miracle! You can't shoot a miracle! Spread the alarm! He's escaped! I've got to get to Jim Stewart. I've got to. If we... If we destroy the bridge, the whole Yankee army and this side will be cut off. No supplies. No ammunition. I've got to get to Jeb Stewart. Get, get away from her. Now get away, you try it. Please, ma'am. I warn you. I get away from her that you're hurt. I mean you no harm. I need your help. I'm Peyton Forrester. Peyton Forrester? I'm going to get the second. I, I still got this gun, ain't it, Joy? Good Lord. It is Mr. Forrester. Come in. Come in, sir. I'm Sally Watson. Uh, the gang, sir, after me. Uh, just uh, a bite of bread and a glass of water. I had to keep moving. Uh, Peyton Forrester, the man the Yankees couldn't kill. I, I, I have to hurry. You, you have to race. No, there's not time. But you're going to drop. Sit down, sir. Sit for a minute. All right, just, just for a minute. Now, I've got a piece of meat here, and I'll eat it with some beer. No, I, I don't have time. You I just race. I, there's a storm coming up. Oh, you, you, you can hear the wind. I, I, I don't hear nothing. Can't you hear the whistle of the wind? But the whole Yankee army's out looking for you, Mr. Forrester. Where's, where's General Jeb Stewart? I reckon he's a good ten miles southwest. I've got to get to Stewart. Now, first, you, you, you have something to eat. How far the Yankees come since last night? Well, I hear they're past Tuckersburg. Well, then, that, that means they, they've already reached my place. I can't just sit here. Now just have something to eat. You have to do enough traveling. Look, down the road. A Yankee patrol. And it's headed this way. Oh. Better not be found here. You, you have to hide. Uh, where? In, in the cellar. No, no, no. It's the first place they look. It's shown. It's safe. But if they find me here, you'll be shot for sheltering a fugitive. They won't shoot a woman. The least they'll do is burn your house down. Oh, you just let them. No, my, my only chance is to run for it. Head out the back way. I, I'll hold them off for you. Hurry. I'll rip before they see you. Bye, Miss Watson. Goodbye, Mr. Forrester. Let's search that house, man. Corporal. Now, you men out there, that's far enough. You stop where you are. This is private property. We mean you no harm, lady. We're looking for a fugitive. Well, I ain't seen none. We're obliged to search your house, ma'am. You just stand where you are. I know how to use this rifle. Uh, that's another thing, ma'am. Civilians ain't supposed to have weapons. You'll have to hand that over. You want this rifle? You just come and get it. Now, ma'am, be reasonable. Nobody has to get hurt. Hey, Corporal, way yonder in the field. Is that someone running? Let's go, man. Stay Come still. On, let's go. What? I said stand still. I'll shoot the first man that moves. Now, ma'am, you can't interfere with the United States Army. Well, maybe I can't, but I'm doing it. Ma'am, I never shot a woman. That makes us even. I never shot a man. Looks like it's going to be a first time for both of us. Men, after him. Move out. No, I'll shoot. Look out, Corporal. Oh. Oh. I... <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm awful sorry. Run, Mr. Forrester. Run for it. They'll never get you, sir. Nobody can ever catch you. <laughs> Rayburn. John Rayburn. Whoa! Whoa there. Rayburn! Uh, well, it's Mr. Forrester. Rayburn, the Yankees are after me. Well, you don't have to worry about the Yankees, Mr. Forrester. They can't kill you. Nobody, nothing can kill you. Let me hide in your wagon. Underneath your load of hay. The Yankees are still down along this lane, but, but they're headed this way. Soon the storm will drive them back to camp. Yeah. Well, what storm? Well, can't you hear the storm? The wind. Oh, no, sure. But they'll have to come this way. They mustn't see me, Rayburn. Get underneath the hay, Mr. Forrester. Get underneath quicker and lightning. Hey, you you all set, Mr. Forrester? Let's get. Come on, you broke down. Bend your leg and pole kegs. Get up. <laughs> Just 
just no sign of him, Corporal. All right. Rest of you men, let's head back. I guess he got away, huh, Corporal? No, well, not for long. He's still a good ways from the rebel lines. We got men sweeping every square inch of the ground. Yeah. What's that? Well, since you come from the city, Corporal, that's a hay wagon. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Hey, you. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, 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 yeah. What you got on that wagon? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Got me a load of hay. What else? Well, nothing else. Nothing else, huh? You sure? You're sure there's nothing living in that load? Well, there might be one or two field mice. Sometimes they get pitched in with the hay. Field mice, eh? Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Well, let's see. Let's see about everything. You men, fix bayonets. Now, let us ventilate that hay a little bit. Just. That's it. Ah! Up and down. All the way across. Come on now, put a little muscle in there. That's not how I taught you to use a bayonet. Rush! Rush! That's it. Yeah, everybody's doing yeah. just fine. Anybody got himself a little red on his blade? No? Well, maybe there's just hay in there after all. All right, man, all right, that's enough. See? <laughs> Bayonet's good for something else beside roast and potatoes. What's your name, Rebel? Uh, Zeke Rayburn. Mr. Rayburn? Go your way. Go in peace. You're a fortunate man. Indeed you are. Get up! Get up! Get up! Mr. Forrester... Mr. Forrester, you are you all right? Mr. Forrester, you, it's, it's all right to come out now. Yes. Yes, I'm all right. I had a bayonet thrust through my coat, but that was all. Oh, the Lord be praised, Mr. Forrester. The Lord be praised. You better get your load in before the storm hits, Rayburn. What? What storm, Mr. Forrester? But don't you hear it? H hear what? The wind. Can't you hear it? Whistle past your ears. No, no, sir. That must be my imagination. We're, we're lucky they was infantry soldiers. What, what do you mean? Uh, they was cavalry. Well, they might have decided to take the hay for their own horses, and then it would have been all over for you. Yes. How far is it? It's our lines. It's no more than a mile and a half, but here's where we start running into patrols. You'd, you'd be better off on foot. At least you'd have trees and bushes for cover. You, you, you're right. Oh, oh, now. Thank you, Redburn. I'm grateful. Uh, it's all of us who ought to be grateful to you, Mr. Forrester. Everybody's talking about it. It's, it's like a miracle. Yes, Redburn. It is. Now, you, you, you keep to the line of trees on your left. You follow them into a little ravine, and on the other side is Jeb Stewart's cavalry. Goodbye, Rayburn. Goodbye, Mr. Forrester. Forrester. Forrester, don't be scared. Who? Who, who are you? Lieutenant Burns with Stewart's cavalry. What? Shh. There's a Yankee troop up ahead. You scared one of the sentries. Lie still just for a minute. What? What are you doing here? Well, some of us come out to look for you. Figure you'd be headed this way. Well, then, I'm saved. Saved? Well, we've got to get home first, but that's nothing. i got a squad in back of me. When I give the signal, they'll open fire. And while everybody's shooting, you and I'll sneak away. Are you ready? Ready. Now! Let's go, Parker. Let's go! Peyton Forrester. General Stewart. Mr. Forrester, let me shake your hand. Word of your exploit has spread through the entire South. Sir, I can only say I, I prayed for a miracle. And we needed it. It's been a dark year for us. 
But now, men, women throughout the country are taking heart once more. Thank you, sir. You had to make your way through an entire Union army to get here. I had help, sir. Loyal Southerners fed me, sheltered me, and even fought for me. We're going to win this war, Forrester. I've never been as convinced of it as I am now. I see new spirit in all my men. And it's all due to you. I... I only did my duty, sir. And... Well... No. No, I, I, I can't say I did my duty. I failed. You failed? Yes, sir. I... I didn't accomplish my mission. Bobby Tompkins and I set out to destroy the Owl Creek Bridge. Robbie's dead, and the bridge still stands. The explosion was not strong enough. The bridge must be destroyed. But I don't have the men. But you, you don't need men. Oh, it's strange. What's strange? The wind feels like a storm, and yet... And yet the trees are still. Why do you say I don't need men to take Owl Creek Bridge? The wind... Why is a wind howling like that? Why don't I need men, Forrester? Be because I'm not talking about an assault. Just give me one volunteer, and we'll accomplish what Robbie and I set out to do last time. You'll never get near the bridge. General, the Federals have at least three divisions this side of Owl Creek. If we destroy the bridge, we cut their only supply line. We have them in a trap. You think you can do it? It's part of the miracle. The bridge, it was meant to be destroyed. That's why I was saved. So I could try it again. And this time, succeed. One miracle, evidently, is not enough. What Peyton Forrester is asking for is another. And why not? If it's a question of knowing how to ask, certainly Peyton Forrester has discovered the secret. However, it's also possible to run out of miracles. The first time Peyton Forrester tried to destroy the Owl Creek Bridge, the Union Army caught him and tried to hang him. But Peyton prayed for a miracle, and somehow the rope broke at just the right moment and he fell into the river unharmed. He has made his way to General Jeb Stewart, who has given him the gunpowder to try it again. I'm your volunteer, Mr. Forrester. Lieutenant Burns, you realize this mission must be performed in civilian clothes. Oh, I'm aware of that, sir. And uh, you know the penalty if we're caught? Same penalty we exact from the Union spies that are caught, Mr. Forrester. We'll need the powder and the fuses, and I'll need some hair to make a false beard and mustache. What's that, sir? I, I should have a white shirt. And so should you, incidentally. Well, why, sir? Burns, do you know anything about medicine? No, sir. Yes, you do, Burns. You're a doctor. <laughs> Me? We're both medical men. You see, my face is well known. I'll need a disguise. I need a way to march up to that bridge as bold as brass. But how, sir? I told you. We'll be a pair of medical doctors. But who's going to believe us? Everybody. Why shouldn't they? We'll even have the proper papers. Oh, was I up? Oh. Who are you? Millicent. Oh, Payton. Oh, it's you. Well, if the disguise can fool my own wife... Darling Yankee soldiers patrol through here all the time. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, you're alive, and I, I prayed so hard. We prayed for the miracle, oh, Melissa. Now, I want to see you more than anything in all the world, but, but why are you back this way? Darling, the whole Union Army is after you. You should be hiding. I haven't completed my mission. Peyton, the Yankees mustn't find you here. Millicent, I... I... Honey, honey, what is it, Peyton? My, my neck. Something seems to be rubbing against my neck. It's something stiff, something sharp. Oh, you're not well. You're not well, darling. It, it was such a horrible experience. 
You're real. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm all right. I, I need I need strength. I came home. I saw you. I'm all right. I'm all right now. Peyton, you're not listening to me. Peyton, what is it? Listen to the wind, Millicent. The wind. How it whistles oh. and screams. Peyton, I'm frightened. And now... I must go. Hide. Hide, Peyton. I'll hide with you. Our old creek bridge still stands. Everyone knows you've done enough. I must go back to the bridge. I won't let you. I won't let you go. Please, listen to me, Millicent. No, no more. Let's end this senseless killing. What's the good of it? Millicent, we're fighting for our homes. We've lost, Peyton. We've lost. I prayed, Millicent. I stood on that bridge... On that narrow plank with a thick, rough rope around my neck, I can still feel it scratch and burn my skin. And I prayed, I prayed, let there be a miracle. Save me this time. Save me so I can come back and do it right. Destroy the bridge. The war is lost, Peyton. Destroy the bridge and we can capture an entire Union army. An army with supplies, food, ammunition. Destroy the bridge, and we can win the war. Now that little place we have deep in the woods, no one ever goes there. You can hide there and be safe there. I was saved from the noose, so I could go back and destroy the bridge. Why did you come back to torture me? I had to come see you. I had to see you. Peyton, if you love it's me... It's because I love you and the children in this house. And our land and the country, it's, it's all tied together. Darling, I never knew how truly golden the highlights are in your hair. Till I saw the water in the morning sunlight. Stay, Peyton. Stay here. Don't ask me. Don't ask me again. Oh. I may weaken. Please, don't ask me again. Millicent, I must get to the bridge before the storm. Storm? What storm? The wind. Don't you hear the wind? How it, how it howls. How it shrieks. I must go. Now. <laughs> Mr. Forrester. What is it? Shouldn't we stop for a rest, sir? There's no time. But the horses, they, they could use a breather. We have to get there before the storm. Sir, there's no sign of a storm. Oh, well, I can feel it. I can feel it coming. The wind's getting stronger. The wind, sir? It's a gale. But I... Oh, oh, look. Where? Up ahead. That's the Yankee picket. All right. Well, sir, let's turn off the road before they see us. But, but then it burns. We want them to see us. Now, now be calm. Just act calm. Yes, sir. Remember? You're a doctor. Y yes, sir. I, I'll try to remember. Be casual. Be natural. But, uh, but suppose, uh... Suppose? Suppose what? Well, suppose they decide to search our bags. Oh, no. no they won't do that. These are our medical supplies and equipment, remember? Yes, sir. I hope so. Now, uh, now Burns, let's try to look dignified. Yes, sir. Try to look wise, you know, just like a doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, I'm trying. Strange. What, sir? The wind. The gale. What, what happened to it? Huh? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. The wind! It sounded like a hurricane! And you can't be deaf, can you? Well, no, sir, but I, I didn't hear anything. And now, for some reason, suddenly died away. Gone. Yes, yes, sir. So still, so calm. Oh, yes, it is, sir. It, it certainly is. It's, except I, I'm so nervous, sir. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of, Burns. Nothing except something 
scratching my neck as if it biting at my throat. Well, it's too cold for mosquitoes, sir. There's something starting to press. It's it press on my throat. Sir, are you all right? I wonder what happened to that wind. Oh. Well. And who might you two gentlemen be? Corporal, I'm Dr. Jones. And my friend here is Dr. Burns. Hmm. Your friend got a voice? Why, of course, Corporal. And why don't he answer for himself? <laughs> oh, he's, he's my assistant. Is that true? Are you, Dr. Burns? Oh, oh, yes, Corporal. Well, let's see what we got here. We got one gentleman who claims to be Dr. Jones... Another who says he's Dr. Burns. Corporal, if you don't mind, we happen to be on an errand of mercy. Is that so? Well, tell me about it. Now, we have permission from your General Grant to... to... Something wrong, Doctor? No, Corporal, I I, I just seem to have something in my throat. You were saying you had permission from the General to, uh... To do what? Would you to visit some of our wounded prisoners? You do, huh? Yeah, yes, Corporal. And here is the safe conduct. Mine and Dr. Burns. Woody. Yes, Corporal. Bring the lantern. Hold this up. All right. Uh, see what it says, Woody. You're you're better at reading than I am. All right. Uh, the bearer of this safe conduct is to be permitted free. Passage within the lines controlled by Union forces in order to b- perform medical errands of mercy. Signed, U.S. Grant, Lieutenant General. That's what it says, Woody? That's what it says, Corporal. Mm. Hand him back your papers. Mm. Woody. Woody. W- what is it, Corporal? What are you looking at, Woody? What are you staring at the doctor for? Uh, well, well I'm, I'm not... That is, Do I... you know him from someplace? Uh, uh, n- n- no. I mean, where would I know him from? Uh, well, doctors, be on your way. Thank you, Corporal. Magnificent. I can only say, sir, that you were magnificent. We have to get to the bridge. Quickly. I could never have handled it that way, sir. Hurry. The bridge is just a sir. I, I'm beginning to feel very ill. Sir? My, my neck. Your your neck, sir? It's beginning to hurt. I I can feel it. it it's beginning to well, here, here's the bridge, sir. Easy, boy, a little slower. Now, where where do you want to plant the charge? Charge? Where do you want to plant the powder? We have to plant the powder. We have to plant the... the, the here, here. Right, right along. Here, here. Yes, yes, sir. Stop. Stop the horses. Yes, but, sir, you're, you're, you're very ill. No. No. We could do this. Not... Something's choking me. <laughs> No. I'll dismount. Yes, sir. Good look. If we intend to walk our horses across the bridge. Yes, sir. Now. Oh, my throat. Place your sack against this support. Yes, sir. Now, quickly. The fuses in this bag. I've got them, sir. Why? Why is it so dark? What do you want me to do, sir? Lay, lay, lay the fuse out along. I, I, I know, sir. I know. Hurry, hurry. Something's choking the, the life out of me. I've got him, sir. I've got him. Strike a match. Strike a match. Oh, I, I can't breathe. We're going to do it, Mr. Forrester. We're going to bring it off. My, my head. Nothing can stop us now. Burns. Something's choking. This one's ready. And and, and now that <laughs> one. Choking. Choking. The life. How the big whole sky is on fire. Everything. It's all 
Flame lit, sir. She's lit. This, this pain. She's going to go, sir. She's going to go. Now jump, jump in the water. Jump for life. My head. I can't stand the pain. My head is going to explode. There she goes. Is it over? It's over, Woody. It's all over. I saw him drop. I closed my eyes. I I couldn't bear to see the rest. Well, it's all right, Woody. Corporal, that drop through the air, that drop of 30 feet before the rope snapped tight... What do you suppose he must have been thinking? It only took a couple of seconds. I don't suppose he had time to think about nothing. Peyton Forrester was dead. His body, the neck broken, was swinging gently from side to side, suspended from a timber of the Owl Creek Bridge. Swinging gently, swaying gently, turning and twisting gently in the fresh, cool morning breeze above the gold-tinted water of the river below. Our cast included William Prince, Mildred Clinton, Jack Grimes, Leon Janney, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding Mystery Theater program is furnished by the CBS Radio Network. And now here's a scene from tomorrow night's tale on the WOR Mystery Theater. Reverend Stokes, I don't want a theological debate. I want you to tell your congregation the truth. And what is that, Dr. Stabler? That my son Michael conducts his lab experiments for scientific purposes. And shall I ask him to believe in coincidence? What coincidence? That a peaceful town is ripped apart every time your son returns. That cattle die for no reason at all. That we are suffering epidemics and the worst drought in our history. All because of coincidence? Yes. This is the 20th century. What else could it be? Ask your son, Dr. Stamper. Ask your son, Michael, if he's just doing lab experiments.